Man, that's a. I don't even know if we'll be able to get any rubber down. But I tell you this. This is the best track yet. I mean, they told us it sucked. Yeah. But you know, still better than a street. Oh well, yeah. I go like look. Yeah. A couple burnouts, that'd be all yeah, right. Yeah, watch this. Or we're gonna peel up the rubber. Look at oh, it. Nice. Alrighty. That's the groove too, right here. Yep. Here's where we'll leave. Eh, whatever. We've been on worse. Yeah, we've been on worse, but not with a 28. <clears throat> which I mean, have. you know, except that street. Yeah, except that street that we were on. What is this? Oh, that's one of them. Look at that fuel tech. Oh yeah. Oh, that's, that's Frank's sign. Is it? Oh, yeah, yeah Dandy Engines. Yep. Man, that's a... I don't even know if we'll be able to get any rubber down, but I'll tell you this. This is the best track yet. I mean, they told us it sucked. Yeah. But, you know, still better than a street. Oh, well, yeah. I go, like, look. Yeah. A couple burnouts, that'd be all yeah, right. Watch this. Or we're going to peel up the rubber. Look at oh, it, nice. alrighty. That's the groove too, right here. Yep. Here's where we'll leave. Eh, whatever. We've been on worse. Yeah, we've been on worse, but not with a 28. <clears throat> which, I mean, you know, except that street. Yeah, except that street that we were on. What is this? Oh, that's one of the van. Look at that fuel tech. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's Frank's sign. Is it? Oh, yeah. yeah, Dandy Engines. Yep. Do we need to go after Pepsi for a sponsorship now? See if they can get you some Pepsi Max? Oof. I don't know. I mean, Diet Dr. Pepper don't want nothing to, to yeah. do with it. Take a drink and hold the can the right way. That's right. Make that the... Uh, the thumbnail <laughs> so our van driver made a rip yeah and there's a little bit of a transition up here there's a lot of a transition <laughs> up here it's a smooth concrete like they they resurfaced it like, well whenever they they made they did it look how smooth it is yeah man. like dude hey feel how slick it is though. i know yeah. if there's water or something on this Hey man, I kind of thought, man, we'll be all right. This shit <clears throat> all right, now you're about to get. See, what we're gonna call this is drink at your small tire initiation now. No prep on this angle right here. Hey, <laughs> the cool part is, like, this is raised up there, but it's a drop off here. It's oh uneven. yeah, so it's, it's uneven. Oh yeah. One tire. Oh yeah, bad right right tire, no bump. We'll be sideways when we get to here anyway. Yeah, oh, yeah. So. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Our, our rear tires won't hit it at the same time. <laughs> no way. There's going to be a lot of lateral movement going across that deal. Yeah. Start here and go that way. Boosted how fast we need to try to go. Sean, if you made a lift right now, how fast would you try to go? Oh, uh. Oh, man, I feel like you're putting boost. Mid five? Yeah, I'm talking. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's it? But you'd have to get after here and then fucking... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then coast across. Yeah, and then kind of wheel it back right down here. here. Yeah. Aaron goes, I said, what do you think, Aaron? She goes, it's like a curve. Not regulation size, but it's a curve. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a good one. So it looks like we're going to be putting Josh Day's tunes back in these things. That's exactly what I was thinking. Half the back of the Australians, they're going to want some shit up Oh, that's Hey, we're going to have to yeah, I mean, I'm just hey, be honest, man. I don't even know about the Australians. What about us? <laughs> I'm worried about my car. We need to uh, negotiate a couple test hits. I think it would make the event go faster because then they won't be trying to murder it on those two. They'd be trying to do nice. And Single then they won't, test hits. They won't crush. They won't crush their own cars before even. I'll be honest with you. I'd rather start on this. Yep. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I mean, damn. Right. Well, they, they won't have hey, we there. said every track that we've been to so far here hasn't been a no prep. This, this is one is going to be. Yeah, Ender with a doozy. 
now I understand why everybody was uh, from here racing at Sydney. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. That didn't give them no data. Right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Well, they got big chests at the end of the race because the one come over and said, I'll race it for 10 grand. I said, well, they just shut down. You think they're going to open it back up for you and me? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. It would have been cool to start with this track. Now we've got a good run at all of our data. You know, to go fast. Out the window. Oh yeah, that don't. We should try to put that one tune up in that we put in at the beginning of the day Saturday. And yeah, Friday. yeah. Let's see if that one will go. The one that wouldn't go on that prep track. Yeah. 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 Did you bring any lead? It's already all in the car. Oh, it is. I ain't taking that out. Yeah, I mean, I guess we'd go to Bunnings get some uh, anchor weights. <clears throat> we'll need bunch. This is great. This is uh. Oh, did you hear Boots? It feels like Jim Hughes was here. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. How fast did I go? You know how fast you went there. This is better than there. Then where? Then where you were at in California. Yes. So, yeah, smoother. I'm sorry, where are we at in California? Oh, the, small tire yeah, stuff. Small, well, yeah, you yeah, went yeah. off into the That's not going to help you at all. Help you no, better. yeah, no. But what I'm saying is, like, it's better. So, as they're, you know, as you get test passes, get data, I think you'll be able to go, honestly, faster than you went there. You know, and pretty fast there. Oh, for that surface. Yeah. But you asked me like first go down the track, like I said I'd try for like maybe like a fifty, something like that, just to see if it'd go down. Five fifty? Yeah. Just see if it'll go down. I mean you're you're probably gonna get a test pass, I would suspect. I think we're gonna need multiples. I don't know if you're gonna get multiples. I, I'd be happy with just one. Yeah, just one would be I, I, I'd be so happy yeah. if we just got one test pass. I'll come out here, I'll Burr, down through that. Oh, you missed, the, you, missed, you missed the one. Either that, or, either that, or I'll run here, <laughs> yeah. the button, smoke the tires, then have no idea what yeah. I'm gonna do. Yeah. yeah, but you can always back up and try again. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. I think you'll be. You all may right. have to talk to mom and dad about testing. Yeah. I think you're psyching yourself out a little bit. You could be all right. Okay, so we got the car out of the Connex, got it in an enclosed trailer, and we pulled it up here to Dandy Engine so that Frank can help us uh, maintenance this deal. We're gonna put rods in it, check everything over real good, and then uh, make four oh, yeah, final passes. Oh yeah, you're not getting that no, under there. No, no. What's this unit? This is what Frank is driving this weekend. Yeah, yeah but what is it? I, I don't even know. It's a four. Yeah. That's my, um, my big straight time. <laughs> Great car. It's pretty cool. This is a very iconic car in Australia, iconic model. This one is? Yeah, very. Um, I think back back in production days, it was known to be um, the series that they called the GT version was like the fastest production car that ever came out. It used to run like 13s out of the That's factory. Um, so yeah, and it's because of that. Faster than that now? This one runs 690s at 212, so it's not too much faster, but yeah. Yeah, not too much faster. It's still factory leaf spring, nice. um, suspension points, blah, blah, blah. Still has factory shock towers. We, we've had to just put some chromoly bars, like we had to get rid of the factory control arms because we were bending them. <laughs> Figure out what AGT is what. Like we said, here at Dandy Engines, and uh, Frank's gonna give us a little, give us a little tour of, of a Hemi. Yeah, that's right. He gonna show us. So we got 36 passes on this thing. Six, six to seven of those were big tire passes that we went 390s with. Then the rest of them have been small tire passes with not a lot of. Power. Yes, but uh, a lot of traction control. A lot of traction control. You know, control. and Frank says that's bullshit. That that's not that that's hard on. Oh, uh -huh. shit. Uh -huh. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's yeah. bullshit that it's hard on stuff. Yeah. That's not true. Well, it depends. Like, if you're just pulling timing out like we're doing. Like, in and out, in and out, in, in and, and out, out, in and out. Help, help. MH6 does that for the first two and a half seconds. And oh, I've yeah, never heard. Every, everyone that I've, yeah. I, I've had since, uh, especially since we've been using traction control. Yeah. Like, we use, for the first second, we use that to control the engine. Right. You know? No matter if we're on small tires or big tires, we control the engine with that. He explained it to me. What, Made what's sense. I, yeah. And it's the actual, like a hard ignition cut is what would be hard on it, not the, In and what out. we're doing. I mean, 
in my head i understand the pulling it out putting it back in and it's like getting a run at it but i understand that, that there's tolerances in there for reason, yeah you know so okay frank i don't know i know you do this a lot more than me but whenever i do this are we doing one side at a time yeah i think it's easier to do one side at a time. whatever I, yeah. i'll do it anyway but i have i tell me i'm weird so I, tell me. I pull everything off and i have a certain spot for everything like, that's what i like to do okay perfect uh it's easy whenever, to whenever we did the uh the peterbilt whenever it broke down on me yeah. and that guy's just in there throwing shit out i'm looking around i'm telling phantom wow they do it way different than we do you know he's pulling things out and there's bolts over here and bolts over here and bolts over no. here well then when we went back together with it they're out, they're searching for bolts no that's I one of the tries perfect so i'll perfect. put like rock yeah i'm even cool with yeah bringing this just enough room to walk by right here that's all I'm and making. then we can just the other reason like to set my all this stuff to where it all goes back on the same one. Me too. And They're then, all able you know, to, but and yeah. when you know, you know which was, which is the say number one, number three, number five, number seven. Yeah. If you pick up a problem while you're dismantling the engine, I like to say, well, number seven rocker has taken you the shit. You can go through the data I and can, look. No, I can go back to the push rod and check yep. the push rod, and yep. check the valve spring and check the rest of it. So perfect. the more we keep perfect. everything labeled and numbered, the better it is. Yes. Okay. That's perfect then. Let me. Uh, let me get this size right here. So, I've got all the tools you need in one tray. We don't need to go to any other tray. Yeah, um, yeah stay that, the fuck out of his tools, Sean. No, no, he's welcome. <laughs> use, no, just use these ones yeah. here. Do you have this that, size? That, that's, that one there's He uh, made metric. this. Ow. You made this, didn't you, Frank? Yeah, that's, that was a snap-on one. That's got the balls to handle. Oh, it does? You, yeah. Okay. If you need more. I'll just make sure like that, they're on a flash, same way you do. Um, you want me to cut the power on? Yes, please. Uh, uh, Shut itself off, actually. Oh, there's only got one, one bar on the battery. That's probably why. So the driver's side head is off. We got a couple pistons out, and so far, mostly everything looks good. Yeah. Bearings couple, all look good. All the bearings have looked good so far. There's a couple of uh, couple of push rods are in question. Push rods look like they've been on. Uh, that didn't necessarily mean that it was whenever we had it. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, Ryan ran this engine hard at MPK uh, two seasons ago. A little more. There it is. Uh, two seasons ago, he ran it hard. You know, like for all we know, that could have been happened then. Right. We don't. We don't know. Uh, all we can do is keep doing what we're doing. You know, running oil through the motor before we start it every time and all that shit. Yeah. Uh, I mean, bearings look good though. Bearings look fine, especially for uh, the conditions we ran it in in California. California. We ran a lot of dirt and sand through this motor. Yeah. We need bump. So, you know, uh, this is the first time we've done this. Uh, we haven't haven't done this before. It so. seems pretty straightforward. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a motor. Yeah. You know, just a big puzzle. You know? Big expensive puzzle.
they they jump. They're all Is it all junk? That's really good. Is it? Just do me a favor, will you be doing? Don't drop the cylinder heads like last time. Oh, I can't. Yeah, 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 yeah. He already yelled at me once. He said you're not gonna set it down like on that on the face. Are you going Just kidding. I was, but I won't now. The lights are different over here in Australia. It messes with my camera. Look at that. Whoa. Are these the LED? Ones? Yeah, we got those at home too. Everything look good though? So this one, this one Sean I've already cleaned. And I've given the exhaust valves a quick lap in. All right, so you see it's yeah, like see it. tarnished a little bit mm -hmm. and it's got a perfect seat on the exhaust. The intakes were spot on, but it was hard to sort of see the exhaust. Yeah. But yeah, they're spot on. Nice. So um, I'll get this other one organized and then I can bounce all the springs to make sure the springs are going to be right. He's going to bounce the springs. Right on. I'm going to bounce the springs. going to bounce the springs. Right yeah. on, man. So um, yeah, so then mm. I can put the whole lot together all You stick them out of them. Oh, are they still Oh, warm? yeah, yeah, they're warm. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's all right. There's a lot There's going on in here. A lot here. going on in here. I mean, I don't know how to run any of these machines. No. I know how to I'd run probably that. figure this I, one out. I know how to run this. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> That's you right there. That's me. That's where I'd be. Right in your wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. Having you a rest? Uh, yeah, I'm taking a nap down here. Uh, just getting oil all over me. Yeah. So, uh, the, the thing that we really wanted to make sure that we did, uh, a lot of people just do this at the track. <laughs> four or five hour job you know it's it's not uh, real difficult like this is our first hemi uh -huh. and we weren't uh 100 sure uh we changed rods and other stuff oh yeah you know but this is our first hemi and everybody's like well the intake doesn't have to come off which is that already makes it way oh dude super super we've never had a motor that the intake intake's didn't always have to come off which, intake's always the first thing that has to come off which entails cold pipes and clamps dude and, and, and it, if it was the og or... if it was the og with the big block in it yeah at, wiring everywhere underneath it oh, yeah. you know uh, remember whenever it had the old big block in it before we had the billet intake uh just shoveled full of, yep. of wires underneath and then it had the uh the, the hat you yeah. know the, <laughs> the, elbow. the elbow and all that stuff and and every bolt on that thing was iffy anyways <laughs> because you didn't want to be taking them in and out they were stripped and uh -huh. you know it's just the way that it was and uh uh the hemis and pro line i would assume most of them are, are most of the hemis are this way uh fortunately and i'm gonna say fortunately we we get to deal with proline yeah, yeah. hemis uh but they've got it worked out man these are race engines uh which means you can work on whatever you want to work on without taking everything off they're, they're very modular yes for pros like pro modular so frank's up there dropping pistons in uh i'm under here catching them and and putting them together and yeah, yeah, we're just finishing off the last bits and pieces of the car now. Let's go. So, he's on the phone. Uh -huh. I always think he's talking to me. And so, uh, so you know, whenever we do this at the track, this, that'll be me up there and you'll be under here doing this, no, you know? So, yeah. I just wanted to make sure on the first one that, that we, we learned a little bit, you know, and, and learned how to do this ourselves to where we don't tear it up. The, the chamfer always goes towards the throat. One of the starter buttons in the engine bike. Yes. Well, I mean, you can look at the crank. Yeah. And if you can't look at the crank and tell which way it needs to go, the, fuck out of there. the, the crank <laughs> does this on, on whichever side that chamfer goes to, you know? So. So basically, the driver's side goes towards the front. Passenger side, passenger goes, side the goes towards the rear. Yeah. Um, it's just a small job. It's fuck all. And <laughs> it's what? It's fuck all. It's fuck all. I'm just steady. This maxima wires, oil just out. sticky as hell, man. And it's just, it's uh, it's like doing a burnout in a in a whole bunch of pimp juice. And you know, you have the spider webs spider everywhere. Webs. That's what it's doing under here as it as it drips down into my face. Yeah. Uh, literally we've got two pistons left to put in uh one more after this one and uh after that we start uh putting the, putting the heads back on we have uh two i'm not gonna say burnt push rods two push rods that have been hot yes uh so we still got to deal with that uh probably put them back in we're not going to no. because eventually that's going to be a problem and that's the reason that we uh we run the valves as much as we do at least every other pass uh or you can look at javi and he does it after MPK, every pass and in mpk that's you're gonna do that uh 
Like here we're not running the thing super hard, which really isn't an, an excuse to not do it every pass. Yes. But you know. Yeah, for sure. So uh, once we do MPK and we're, we've got the big pro charger on it and we're pushing that thing every, every pass, yeah. uh, we will do it every every pass. I mean, but if, if it would have, right now it's just got hot. Yes. And we haven't lost any metal out of it. It has not mushroomed. Is it, is it coming on me? Oh. Yeah, you can look at that either way. Uh, we, we haven't mushroomed anything. No. We, we, it hasn't been a problem. All of our uh, lash has been great. Uh, so it's not a problem right now, but it's gonna be a problem. So we're gonna catch it now. Uh, obviously, I did not know this. This is what I just found out. Uh, you can, these are three piece push rods oh, yeah, and you can cool. change them. You can change just the cups in the ends, yeah, which is cool. amazing. So do they screw in or press in, Frank? I don't, I don't know, we're gonna find out. What's up? The, the push rods, the, the tips, are they press in? They're press in? Yeah, okay. so we can, we can just get a slide hammer and like weld something to it and just pull it out and then clean it and install the new one. We need to look and see if we got any. Yeah. Okay. Ah, good? Yep. Going down? Yes, sir. Boom. Okay. Uh, oh, cap. I just spoke cap. to my wiring guy. He can come in the morning and put new buttons in for you and fix that um, strap, earth strap. That or one? that ground, oh, ground, the ground strap. that I broke. The ground wire. I had did that. That was me. I, well, for some reason we had grounds on the heads. Which we always have grounds on the heads, but they're usually more noticeable. And then I, I pulled the head off, That's and at some two. point I felt it uh, pulling against me, and I rah, ripped it off there. It had to come He's, out. Yeah, right. He's very gentle. He's aggressive. He's gentle. Sir, He's sir, are you, so are you so aggressive? He is impatient and aggressive. Well, look, I pulled a couple of times and it didn't come off. So I pulled a little bit harder, the and then it came is, off. The problem is you thought it was the head gasket or something I catching. Did. I did. And you're like, oh, I did. I've seen this before. Look, if I would have known that it was a ground, I'd have stopped. Yeah. But I did not. So he went. So I went for it. I so gave it a shot and it came off. Shit had to happen. And then I went to set the head on the ground and his head guy came over and goes, yeah, 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 you're not gonna set that on the ground, are you? I was like, well, no, yeah, I mean, yeah, and I thought about it, but uh, no, I'm not going to. <laughs> but now that you asked that question, yeah. I am not. I am not. <laughs> I am not going to. Why would I do that? Uh, <laughs> so kind of, no. Yeah, no. Who kind of dumbass would do that? all these, though. So all the slugs are dropped in and it all went fine. And now you're about to torque all the rod bolts, right? Torque them to 125. 125. That is a lot, sir. Ooh. What's that? A lot that? of spark on that one. What's that? I, it's not enough to make a difference. Just stretching it a little There's, more. Yeah, it's just stretching it just a little bit. It's all right. That's cool. <laughs> I, I'm happy to do whatever makes, you know. Let me translate this for Frank for you. Look, man, this is your motor, and if you want to fuck it up, power to you. <laughs> That's what he just told me. Yeah. That's what he just told me. I get it. But, hey, I've been learning Australian, and that was a translation. It, it, it was the, it's the same way whenever we're tuning yeah. the car. And he's like, <laughs> like the other day, he goes, you want to put the safe tune in it? I'm, bear in mind, I'm almost strapped I'm, in. I'm strapped in, fixing to pull up into the water box. He says, you want to put the safe tune up in it? I said, no. No, let's leave it alone. Uh -huh. And then he goes, okay. He walks off. He gets about the hood of the car. He turns around and walks off and goes, ah. And I was like, let's put the safe tune up in. <laughs> hey, it worked. It worked. It did. Hey, and it still tried to wash out on the starting line just a little bit, you know? So I'm glad we did not, I'm glad we didn't put the bigger tune up in it. But you know me, man. Hey, I'm the bigger tune up yeah. guy. If you see one in there that's called fast, you're going to use it. Well, in the ECU right now, we've got three tunes loaded and they're fast, faster, and fast as fuck, boy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's number six. Okay. 
There's five. Five and six is done. Time to do four and three. At least then we can put the sump on. <laughs> the sump. Oil pan. AKA the oil pan. For all you Americans that don't understand. That's right. You're not as cultured as we are. Okay. Now, one and two. Okay. Done. Clean it up and we'll put the put the, the sump, sump on. Put the sump on it. Watch me fuck this one. Oh. That was bright. I was not ready. Oh, sorry, dude. I should have said something. No, you're good. No, you're good. It was my fault. I was looking at it. So he is welding a nut on the end of our push rod so that he can slide hammer it out, the, the tip of it that is in question. Yeah. This is sketchy. Because we don't have another one. Uh-uh. I've got some soft jaws so I don't scratch the... Um... Let's go in my other room. You a Ford guy, Frank? Uh, I used to be until yeah. I got my first Hemi. Ah. Have you messed with any of the Coyote stuff? I actually haven't done much Coyote, but I have done Godzilla. Oh, okay. Which is the same family. Right. Yeah. So I like to clamp it with some soft aluminium jaws. Yep. Aluminium. Aluminium. <laughs> aluminium. <laughs> I heard you say that on your first. Look at that. Oh, man. Look at that. Just a couple of quick little tugs. That's a piece of fucking cake right yeah. there. I see now how you know when to stop pressing the new one in. It's got a colder on it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. Is it hot? Yeah. But while the push rod's hot, let's go push the new one in. Where's the new one? In that box. Um, in that yeah, 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 yeah. plastic. Just so she'll slide in better. Yeah. Yep. Here, two nice, very nice, whatever you need. Take, take a couple spare ones, whatever. They're all the same, huh? Yeah. Just need one for yeah. you. You can it. All right, let's go find the press. So how would you do this at the racetrack then if you didn't have a press in the trailer? So, I mean, we, we okay. I'd use a hammer. Yeah, I mean they're they're tool steel, right? Hardened tool steel or whatever. Sure. We have a press now. Do we? Not here, but in our MPK trailer we do. Not a press. I'm sorry, we got a vice. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, holy shit. Oh, right. now we don't have a good press at home. No, <laughs> let alone in, in a trailer. Yeah. That's still warm, so it should go in fairly easy. I'm just gonna use that old piston that I just took out of the trash rubbish bin. This is a press right here. Yeah, I think the it's rubbish, nice. Out of the rubbish bin. Yeah. Out of the rubbish bin. Now, some people might not like this, but it works for me. They can put it in the comments. That's right. As Jeff would you say. You don't like it? Put it in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's it. Blow it out, make sure it's got no shit in there and 
There's, there's an air blower wanna... just around the corner. Well, I, I'm an air blower too, so. Over here. Try that. Make sure it goes through. Well, I didn't want to spray all No, no, no you're, you're fine. You're fine. All right, it's good to go. Let's go and win some rounds of racing. Yeah. So have you tried Vegemite? <laughs> so Jen, who has been doing this with you for over ten years, over, yeah, over ten is years. About to put I, I've known you Jen for over ten years, and she knows to, yeah. she knows a lot put about me. You, Sean Ellington, <laughs> on live TV. Yeah, live TV, and not not only me. I feel like we got Disco somebody uh -oh. who doesn't gotta, really care what comes out of his mouth. I got a yeah. couple punchlines ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. First, I'm gonna get a clock. Here's that face for you. So, so yeah, no, I don't. Got any, uh, <laughs> can we get one of those uh, blended drinks? But yeah. so I, I don't know what is happening or what we're doing. Capitalism without racism. That sign says oh, right there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't know what we're doing. Yeah. I don't know what we're talking about. It's a it's a very interesting move to put you on live yeah. TV. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hopefully there's like at least a 15 second delay for the beeps, beep, beep. Like I don't even do live feeds with you. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I may say something I shouldn't say. I mean, we once had a thing where you could say anything you want that was somewhat live, and they took it away from us. Yes. I feel aircon. It was a podcast, Jen. Remember, and you, you said remember. that we were endearing racists. Y'all said that we were racist, is what y'all said. But then we that. said that we were endearing racists. I didn't say you were You know? Yeah. Somebody said it. <laughs> I think the letter. It was not Jim. <laughs> yeah. I read the letter yeah. whenever they shut it down. Yeah. So, yeah. We don't really know what's happening. Yeah. Um, we were over uh, putting rods in the motor, and now here we are. Downtown Melbourne. Me Melbourne. 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 It's almost like you gotta say Melvin. Yeah, yeah, you gotta say it real quick. Real quick. So, uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. Everything will be yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Five good are you, Jenny? One, get 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 five good are Goes live on social media tonight. And then five more shots. Five starts tilt up. Five. 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 Uh, I heard that. I mean, oh, it's a studio. It is a studio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a real, this is a real thing. This is. This is actual live TV. Where can we be? Well, you need either way. You want me to hold on? So they, they gave you instructions to be PG. 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 I told them. Got it. That's why they brought me. Yeah. That's why they brought me. They so brought the most. You put the hoodie on. Yeah, uh, I could use it for one, and then plus, you know, it's. I was told yeah, not sleep sleep better shape. Sleep is it? I mean, I mean you don't know. It's kind of me. People see that. <laughs> what? It's a better statement with your sleeveless. You know. I mean, people see that. <laughs> kind of sets it up. He does. I mean. Out, that gives it an outlaw touch, dude. Yeah. 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 Old, old dude in there said break a leg. Yeah. Did you get that? He said break a leg. I'll try to yeah, break a leg. Try to cover up some of my tattoos. You know. <laughs> yeah. Like people think that I'm, you know, PG. So you ain't got that fa face tat yet. I know. <laughs> Are you getting tattooed while you're here? Did you figure um, out what you're doing? They they asked me that. Fritz asked if I wanted to go tomorrow and get yeah. tattoos. Some of the people. Like a block. Yeah. We're yeah. Going. We're gonna go. I don't know. I don't know. Like, Excuse me. I feel like uh, whenever I say I want to go get a tattoo, man, I want to get a tattoo. Yeah, like a four-hour. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah, look, look, I'm gonna be a minute, man. I ain't getting no outline of a kangaroo. <laughs> That's about what I'm gonna get, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're not gonna be the only one, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's the, what's the, the cool uh, yeah, sound guy? Probably bring the fuel. Nope. Gotcha. The tall guy. The tall one. Patagonia. Nope. The guy who got the, the tattoo today. 
Yeah, Patagonia. Uh, who got a, who got like the boxing kangaroo. <laughs> yeah. Boxing Pat, I call him oh, Patagonia. Oh, Cliff? Cliff. Cliff. Yep, yeah, Cliff. Cliff. That's him. Cliff's the cool. Jacob got a kangaroo. It's like an outline of a kangaroo. That's what this is, but and it's like yeah. this. <laughs> right here on the torso. Yeah. yeah. He got it really? Right here, though, so I How like it. How did you see this? He yes, told us. Got one. Oh. Here. You sit here. No, I'm sitting wherever. I'm here. I'll stand. Uh, yeah. What? Not what? Not in love. Not just now. I still don't know what we're doing. I'm just gonna ask questions and I'm gonna wing it. Uh -huh. I don't even know what to do. We we haven't even got briefed. We're just they just they just threw us to the wolves. I feel like they're gonna pan over to me and I'm gonna go. <laughs> and I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna sit there. I'm gonna freeze up. Is what I'm gonna do. Nah, camera scare me. Yeah. Ah, uh, there's some seats there. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. I have a program in my ear. The little nose on the program. Mm -hmm. Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of In Pit Lane coming to you on Channel 31 from Grand Prix City, Melbourne. Coming up on the program, look, a huge month of motorsport. We've, we've got the Australian Grand Prix at the end of the month. Last weekend we had the Phillip Islands Historic. Coming up this weekend, lots and lots of things happening out at Calder Park. If you're a watcher of the Discovery Channel, you've probably heard of the reality program, The Street Outlaws. Well, The Street Outlaws are not just in Australia, they're here in Melbourne and they're running at Calder Park this weekend at, uh, at Cold Park on Friday and Sunday. And joining us a little bit later on in the program, we've got, uh, we've got Disco Dean and Murder Nova, they're going to join us in just a moment. But look, it's been a really big weekend. Well, Doc's with me again, as per usual. We don't have time to chat now because too much has been happening. Let's find out some of it in the Impit Lane Motorsport News. And that's the Impit Lane news for this week. When we come back, we'll be joined by our special guests, Sean, Murder Nova, Ellington, and Disco Dean Carnes Jr., plus live music from Sendries. You're watching Impit Lane on Channel 31 right across Melbourne and Geelong. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Okay. This is only 10 seconds to say it, so... <laughs> Back to in pit lane. We're coming up this weekend out at Calder Park after a break of quite a, quite a long time. We've got drag racing back at Calder Park, mostly you know, sort of off street stuff. But coming up this weekend, we've got the stars of the Discovery Channel Street Outlaws, and they're involved in something called no prep racing. And let's face it, if you're going to go somewhere for no prep racing, Calder Park's probably a pretty good place to go. To find out about what they're doing this weekend, please welcome to the program. We've got Murder Nova and Disco Dean. You know, guys, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank Thanks for, Thanks for having us. Now, first of all, you, you've had, well, for people who haven't seen Street Outlaws, you should almost start with you. Uh, what is it for, for people who haven't seen it? Well, it started off as, uh, as street racing on, on the streets, you know, and uh, it's, it's evolved into much more, you know. We started doing a, a series called No Prep Kings after 
seven seasons of doing the, the original Street Outlaw show, uh, which basically people could come and watch us at tracks race on a non-prep surface. So this is becoming quite big down in the States, isn't it? I mean, what's the, what's the advantage of this? Is something that's come about because of, you know, like the financial cost of preparing these tracks? I mean, you know, they're so sticky now as well. I mean, what was the, what was the motivation for no prep racing? What? I mean, it, it takes away, you know, the money. You know, you can go out there and if you're, you're a smart tuner, you know how to tune, you know how to drive to get your car down that surface that is not glued to the world, you got a good chance. Just, a, is there any other parameters? Like, I mean, is there a certain amount of distance you guys race over, or do you change it up or down sometimes? Is there certain restrictions on the cars that you can't race? Oh, I mean, yeah. no, you, got to, you, got to, you can't just have a fully blown something that's going to do 500 mile an hour against something that's probably just a short track special or something yeah, like that. I, I do that. I yeah, do that. <laughs> I mean, that's what I bring to the dog fight. That's yeah. what I bring. There, there's, there's certain uh, uh, class requirements, yeah. you know, uh, a weight. You know stuff like that, but other than that, no. There's there's not a whole lot. Yeah. You know. Of, so uh, Dean, tell us about the cars that you're driving this weekend out of cold. It's a pretty spectacular looking thing. I mean, for the color, if it, if, if for no other reason, tell us about the. Yeah, car. it's a '66 Chevelle, and it has a Brad Anderson Hemi with a C road screw blower. It makes normally around 36 to 3500 horsepower, and we're racing on a 10 inch wide tire. So on a on a surface that has no preparation whatsoever, it resembles a street, and then we take three thousand horsepower and manhandle that down there an eighth mile. So is there any with both with your cars? Is there any sort of traction control or anything involved in that? Some people run. Uh, I, he runs. Uh, a lot of people run it. A lot of people don't. Yeah, so, we run fuel tech on our cars. You know, state of the art stuff. Where, you, you know, it, it's not as as easy as what some people make it out. You can't just turn it on and it does everything for you. You got to have really close tune ups. And you know you gotta have a lot of good data first. Well, that gives me a good lead into what I was about to ask you. Coming from America to Australia, everything's just a little bit different. You've got four different tracks over here you've never been on before. I'm sure you get to do a little bit of sussing out and going and look at the track itself. But what are some of the major differences between the, the tracks so far from here in Australia so that, you, that you've noticed? They've, they've been pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, the, the tracks are, uh, even though they're not what the Australian racers are used to. They're not as sticky as what Australian racers are used to. They're a lot stickier than what we're used to. So, uh, you know, we got a chance to check out uh, Calder Park earlier yeah. today. Yeah. And uh, I can tell you, we're going back check in time. It out, <laughs> we're definitely going to be at a no prep. Step back in time. Yeah, it's it's going to be no prep, and it's going to it's going to be pretty. Sounds like right up your alley. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So as we said, it's sort of, yeah, like, we, we know the, we, the, the words reality and television are sort of mutually exclusive. I mean, in terms of, you know, doing the actual show, I mean, how much how much of it is a show? How much of it is the race? Is there any involvement in terms of, yeah, like, yeah, hey, guys, can you run that again or can you do it? Or is it just, yeah? Hell yeah, how we're today, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. How the, real the, is this reality? The, the, yeah. racing, the racing, it, you can't stage that. You know, the racing's as real as it gets. It always has been since day one. Uh, the racing is real, but we do. We put on a show for the fans. The emotions are real at the end, but when you bloody when you score a win it, as well, it's got to so, be. Yeah. It's got to be. You know, yeah. no, no, no. You can't racer. fake the high fives and the hard and all that. So not at all. And, and no racer is going to go out there and lose on no, purpose. No, absolutely. You know, it's not, not going to happen. Hurts the pride. No, yeah. So what have you seen so far in terms of yeah, you race at Willowbank, you race up in Queensland, you race at Sydney uh, as well. Uh, the cars that you've seen there. I mean, what's impressed you with the cars and the, the things that you'll go and talk about when you get back home? I mean, I think it's probably the, the lack of quit that, that all these Australians have, you know. We, we come over here, and, and this is something that we do. We do eighth-mile racing. We go off of an instant green. That's stuff they're not used to, you know. So uh, to, to put it bluntly, you know, they've taken kind of a beating. You know, we're good at this. And uh, they're a little bit behind us. they got a little bit of work to do, but they've got no quit in them, and they just keep on Keep on, racing. on that note, then, what's the chance of maybe inviting a couple of those over here that, to, over to your to show and I, say, bring them over and I, I, bring I it on? Them. I welcome them. There's, there's a lot of Australian racers. Nine, eight, seven, seven, six, Welcome back to In Pit Lane. We're coming up this weekend out at Calder Park. Uh, for a break of quite uh, quite a long time, we've got drag racing back at Calder Park. Mostly you know, sort of off-street stuff, but coming up this weekend, we've got the stars of the Discovery Channel Street Outlaws, and they're involved in something called no-prep racing. And let's face it, if you're going to go somewhere for no-prep racing, Calder Park's probably a pretty good place to go. To find out about what they're doing this weekend, please welcome to the program. We've got Murder Nova and Disco Dean. G'day, guys. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks, Thank for you. Thanks for having us. 
Now, first of all, you, you've had, well, for people who haven't seen Street Outlaws, you should, we'll start with you. Uh, what is it for, for people who haven't seen it? Well, it started off as, uh, as street racing on, on the streets, you know, and uh, it's, it's evolved into much more, you know. We started doing a, a series called No Prep Kings after seven seasons of doing the, the original Street Outlaw show, uh, which basically people could come and watch us at tracks race on a non-prep surface. So this is becoming quite big down in the States, isn't it? I mean, what's the, what's the advantage of this? Is it something that's come about because of, you know, like the financial cost of preparing these tracks, I mean, you know, they're, they're so sticky now as well. I mean, what was the, what was the motivation for no prep racing? What? I mean, it, it takes away, you know, the money. You know, you can go out there and if you, you're a smart tuner, you know how to tune, you know how to drive to get your car down that surface that is not glued to the world, you got a good chance. Just, is there any other parameters? Like, I mean, is there a certain amount of distance you guys race over, or do you change it up or down sometimes? Is there certain restrictions on the cars that you can't race? Oh, I mean, yeah. no, you, got to, you, got to, you can't just have a fully blown something that's going to do 500 mile an hour against something that's probably just a short track special or something yeah, like that. I, I do that. I yeah, do. <laughs> I mean, that's what I bring to the dog fight. That's yeah. what I bring. There, there's, there's certain uh, uh, class requirements, you know, a uh, uh, weight. You know stuff like that, but other than that, no. There's there's not a whole lot. Yeah. You know. Of, so Dean, tell us about the cars that you're driving this weekend yeah. out of cold. It's a pretty spectacular looking thing. I mean, for the color, if it, if, if for no other reason, tell us about the yeah, car. Yeah, it's a '66 Chevelle, and it has a Brad Anderson Hemi with a Sea Rotor screw bar. It makes normally around 36 to 3,500 horsepower, and we're racing on a 10-inch wide tire. So on a on a surface that has no preparation whatsoever, it resembles a street, and then we take three thousand horsepower and manhandle it down there an eighth mile. So is there any with with your cars? Is there any sort of traction control or anything involved in that? Some people run. Uh, I, he runs. Uh, a lot of people run it. A lot of people don't. Yeah, so, we run fuel tech on our cars. You know, state of the art stuff. Where you, you know it, it's not as as easy as what some people make it out. You can't just turn it on and it does everything for you. You got to have really close tune ups. And you know, you gotta have a lot of good data first. Well, that gives me a good lead into what I was about to ask you. Coming to, from America to Australia, everything's just a little bit different. You've got four different tracks over here you've never been on before. I'm sure you get to do a little bit of sussing out and going and look at the track itself, but what are some of the major differences between the, the tracks so far from here in Australia so, that, you, that you've noticed? They've, they've been pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, the, the tracks are, uh, even though they're not what the Australian racers are used to. They're not as sticky as what Australian racers are used to. They're a lot stickier than what we're used to. So, uh, you know, we got a chance to check out uh, Calder Park earlier yes. today. Yeah. And uh, I can tell you, we're going back check in time. It out. <laughs> we're definitely going to be we're at a no prep. Step back in time. Yeah. It's, it's going to be no prep and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be pretty Sounds amazing. like right up your alley. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So as we said, it's sort of, yeah, like, we, we know the, we, we, the, the words reality and television are sort of mutually exclusive. I mean, in terms of, you know, doing the actual show, I mean, how much how much of it is the show, how much of it is the race? Is there any involvement in terms of, yeah, like, you know, guys, can you run that again or can you do it? Or is it just, you know... Hell, how yeah, we're it today, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. How the, real the, is this reality? The racing, yeah. the racing it, you can't stage that. You know, the racing's as real as it gets. It always has been since day one. Uh, the racing is real, but we do. We put on a show for the fans. The emotions are real at the end, but when you bloody when you score a win as well, it's got to so, be. Yeah. It's got to be. You yeah. know, no, no, no. You can't racer. fake the high fives and the hard and all that. So not at all. And, and no racer is going to go out there and lose on no, purpose. No, absolutely you know, it's not, not going to happen. Hurts the pride. Oh, yeah. So what have you seen so far in terms of yeah, you race at Willow Bank, you race up in Queensland, you race in Sydney uh, as well. Uh, the cars that you've seen there, I mean, what's impressed you with the cars and the, the things that you'll go and talk about when you get back home? I mean, I, I think it's probably the, the lack of quit that, that all these Australians have, you know. We, we come over here and, and this is something that we do. We do eighth mile racing, we go off of an instant green. That's stuff they're not used to, you know. So uh, to, to put it bluntly, you know, they've taken kind of a beating. You know, we're good at this. And uh, they're a little bit behind us. They got a little bit of work to do, but they've got no quit in them, and they just keep on, keep on racing. On that note, then, what's the chance of maybe inviting a couple of those over here to over to your show and I, say, bring them over and you know, I, I, bring I it welcome, on? I welcome them. There's there's a lot of Australian racers. I've met a few, you know, at races in America, and you know when they come over and race with us, you know, That's they, got, they got it together. But you know? the one thing they do have, all of the race cars are like a show car here. They're so beautiful. The inside firewall, the attention to detail on their race cars is bar none 
compared to what we have in the states. Which leads me to a very important well, question. Well, it leads me to saying that we've got to take a break, so we'll hold we'll, 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 we'll yeah, up there, John, for the moment, because we're going to take a break here on Channel 31. When we come back, we'll have more from our guests, really Sean and Dean from Street Outlaws, and also more music from Centrist. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Okay, for those of you watching us on channels on the uh, YouTube channel and also on Facebook, we can uh, we can talk a bit more about like let's talk about the uh, the off the the off the track activities and the extracurricular activities. Um, is it your first visit to Australia? Or yes. Yeah. yes. So you know, like, what 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 have you found? What surprised you, if anything? I mean, just so much stuff is different as as far as the first things. Obviously, you guys drive on the wrong side of the road. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. so there's no we, way we they're gonna concur. they're gonna allow. That's we, right. That's we right. You drive on the wrong side of the so road. So there's no way that they're gonna allow us to drive over here. You know, okay. because uh, we would for sure. Yeah, we are used to this sure. one line anyway. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so you know, it, it's things like that. Uh, the food is something yeah. that that we're you know we're fat Americans. You know, and we like our sweets. <laughs> we're and, we're uh, spoiled over. Here. You know. Uh, well, I love America. Yeah. It's about the only place I can go to unless they say, well, you're Betty, Betty, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Betty's Burgers down Chapel Street does yeah. authentic American food, and yeah, everyone dies for it, but they feel like having a heart attack over your arm. That's, that's, that's what we're looking for. That's exactly what we're looking for. But, that's but, exactly but you go to Chapel Street. something on your social media in terms of, now please explain to, 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 to Humble, whenever we talk to Americans and talk about food, we of course get the, you know, the Vegemite questions yeah. about yeah. Vegemite. So I'm going to turn it on you guys. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Fruit. Pepper. I love it. What yeah. the hell? Yeah. 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 High fives on that one. Absolutely. <laughs> won't leave each other hanging. Definitely. Yeah. I'm, I'm a bit Dr. Pepper fan. I'm oh talking for you. Yeah. Absolutely. It's no, it's just... It's, it's just, like it's just, pure corn syrup. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Oh. You know? Yeah, I'm but, yeah. And that is yeah. one of the things that I've been... Should have got to bring in taste corn syrup in your food, which is... Yeah, I've heard people over and over saying, Oh my God, your Coke, your Cola is just so... You know, it's flat. Just, you've got flat is what I'm going to call your yeah. yeah. stuff over here. It is, uh, I've had a couple, some fans have actually brought me cases of Diet Dr. Pepper since we've been here. And obviously, you guys do not make it over here. It's uh, it's kind of a Texas thing. So even in America, if you go too far north, you can't find it. So it has to travel over here. And it's like somebody shook it up the whole time. Yeah. You know, so yeah. it, it's, it, honestly, I've been drinking... Pepsi Max. Yeah, Pepsi Max. Yeah. 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 And, and it's not bad. Yeah, but by the time it gets there, it's no bubbles. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's I'm right. with you. I'm with you. Yeah. Well, the, the, when people go this weekend at the Colton Park, what are they going to see? They're going to see some awesome racing. You know, they're going to see. Uh, they're going to be able to stand behind their local Aussie racers. You know, and, and and see something new that we're trying to bring over here. Like after we leave, they're not going to quit this. They're going to get better at it. So I've also seen a bit of money banding around. They just it's it, like you don't uh, say let's just go down there. We're not we're not playing for cars like pink slips or anything like that. But let, let's just say that I'll bet you a grand and I'll, I'll raise you, etc. Well, it's almost like a card game. So there's, right. a bit, there's a bit of banter in it, isn't there? No doubt. Like uh, racing and and uh, gambling go hand in hand. It always <laughs> has. It always will. Lots of negotiations. So what's the average amount of what of dollars you have to put into a, a car to get it up to spec to, to obviously give us Aussies a, a whoop ass in? How much how much is how much you guys spend up keep on these sorts of cars and what are they worth? Like you, like overall value of the car? Yeah, right? Just so an average value between all yours, like two hundred fifty thousand US dollars. Two fifty is your average value, Sean. Well, so, yeah. yeah. I, I wouldn't sell my car for nothing. So, <laughs> but <laughs> it, it, you could you could build it. For two hundred. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to ask you all. Yeah, US, US dollars. Two hundred. Yeah. About yeah. the names of your your Murder. Where did the Where did Murder Nova come from? Uh, about. We well, obviously it's a Nova, but yeah, yeah. About seventeen years ago when I got this car and I brought my original car over here, so I've had this since day one that we've been filming. Uh, you know, I took everything that was chrome, everything that was polished, everything that was pretty, and I just blacked it out. Uh, it, it, it's, it was part of our street racing, you know, at night, I didn't want anybody to see the car, yeah. you know, and one of my buddies walked up to me and he kind of looked at it and he went, wow, you really murdered everything out. <laughs> it, it, it just kind of stuck, you know, so, it, and it's been that ever since. And I'm always, I'm, I'm always worried your car. Yeah. <laughs> what is it called? Stinky Pinky. Stinky Pinky. <laughs> yes. Stinky Pinky uh, is okay. a... Yeah. <laughs> this is a PG show. It's a PG, right? You're walking the eggshells there, Brett. 
Uh, should I ask the question of where that comes from? No, 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 you might not. Okay, okay, so what? No, it doesn't it involve any bacon or uh, no, 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 no. hogs it, over there? Or? It, I mean, it could have been a hog. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It turns out I, I think that was a really good time to go back to Channel 31, I think. Okay, let's go back to Channel 31 and we'll wrap this beast up. Okay, so when they're ready in there, give us a countdown and we'll do the final segment. Welcome back to Ends Pit Lane. Well, our guests this week are the, the driver of Murder Nova. We've got Sean and we've got Disco Dean. Um, they're going to be out at Cold Park on Friday and Sunday because on Saturday, I believe there are monster trucks out at Cold Park. Yeah. <laughs> it's sort of, you know, like it's, 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 it's like an American pop culture phenomenon of this. Hopefully, they don't drive over your Griggs. No, yeah. <laughs> I, want to try, I want to try to get her to drive one of those while we're there, is what I want to try to get, see if we can find a seat. Uh, speaking of though, a little bit of carnage, I heard there was a little bit of a glitch over in Perth a, a couple of weeks ago as well uh, too. How's, uh, how's Mr. Robin's uh, uh, little uh, $500,000 uh, shipping container? It was upside down when they found it. So. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't good. It mm. wasn't good. I mean, anytime we're taking all these cars across country and you have to work out the logistics of getting the car from track to track and from the United States to Australia is a big job. Uh, I guess uh, there was a driving accident. I don't know exactly what happened, mm -hmm. but when they opened the container, uh, everything was turned upside down. The car was okay. okay. His world was literally turned um, upside down. I mean, the car's okay after two, three days worth of them, you know, thrashing on it. They yeah. they got it. Uh, it doesn't look pretty, yep. but it's still really fast. Okay, good. Yeah, it doesn't affect so, the aerodynamics at all. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> it still it still flies. <laughs> well. Good luck for this weekend. I mean, uh, I'm sure there's going to be a big crowd out at Calder Park. Incidentally, while we're, while we're doing that, we, we need our, 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 our singer back in position because Cypress is going to take us out in just a moment. But, guys, uh, people, uh, if they still want tickets still available coming up this weekend? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah Absolutely. tickets available. You can get them at the gates. So, well, we look forward to seeing it. And um, people, of course, can watch... Uh, you can watch the, the Street Outlaws series. How many series have you done now? It's about it's a lot, isn't uh, it? He's, he's an OG. He's been since day one. I've been doing it for 10, 11 years. Uh, there are 17 seasons of, of the original Street Outlaws, and we're going into the sixth season of the NBK. Hopefully, Lots of spinoffs. Hopefully see another 10 more years at least out of your place, Sean. It'd be amazing. Yeah. We appreciate it. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for joining us on Bit Lane. Good luck on the weekend, and uh, we appreciate you coming in. Thank you guys for having us. Thanks for having us. And now, next week on the program. <laughs> Back it up. Yeah. Sooner we can go to the pub, he said. Nice job not cussing on live TV. Hey, it was tough. Yeah. It was tough. You did a good job. Did a good job. Glad I gave you that seat. You spoke well. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Great. I just wing it my whole life. Camera camera Footy. Footy. Footy? What's footy? I don't know. The football. Oh, okay. You good? Huh? We always do, Jen. That guy's real worried about the cables, dude, he was, guys. Yeah. Hey, watch the cables. Let's get out of here. We know how to get out of here. Okay. This is if our mic guy ever smells like that mic guy, we're going to get in a fight. <laughs> Fuck your cables. What the fuck are you talking about? What are you going to see? You can see some badass fucking racing this yeah, weekend. That's, that's what I wanted to say. And then I went, oh, yeah. not. Yeah. That's the first thing something went through his mind and didn't go out his mouth. Oh, yeah, I know it was. <laughs> and he put his arm over me, and I was like, damn, Sean, you really smell bad. And he came oh, over to no. me and went like that, and I was like, oh, it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, that, you know. What'd you think? Like, I, you know, it was fine. I mean, you I, I did good. I don't mind doing that. Like, I don't get nervous anymore. I don't yeah. care about the cameras. Like, look, we've been doing this long enough, man. It doesn't matter. You can ask me whatever you want. Yeah. You know? Like, it is tough for me because we do YouTube so much and my mom yells at me all the time. I do need to stop cussing so much, you know, especially whenever I hear Aaron cuss and I get mad, yeah. you know, I don't like it. Yeah. So I probably should slow down some myself, well, but I, I can't help it, man. When I'm in the shop, that's, that's shop talk. That's, that's the way we all grew up. Well, you know? and we're going to have to, vote. we're either going to have to stop or I'm going to have to spend more time editing because they're really cracking down on it with are YouTube. They? Yeah, like they just sent out a... A message for they it. They sent me week. a message. No, no, no. Like oh, well, it's a big youth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, look, we're we're gonna we're we're gonna slow down. I'll I'll, I'll quit. Obviously, I cannot yeah. cuss, but man, it's a lot. It takes a lot of creativity away from right, me to think right. about not cussing. You know, yeah. uh, 
most of you know the smartest people in the world cuss. Yeah. You know, like. And you cuss and you're left-handed, so that's shit. I mean, I'm, I'm, got two for one. I'm definitely special. Yeah. You, you know. Are. People tell me every weekend whenever I'm signing autographs, "Oh my God, he's left-handed." I'm like, "That's right." <laughs> you know. So yeah, no, it, it was fine. I don't, I don't mind that. Like, it. Uh, there was a whole lot more that. Me and Disco could have said to him. We were over there on the two step, Ray just let loose. Yeah. Uh, I was Wait, what, to what? Say, so, what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how'd, you, how'd your car get his name? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is how. Bam! Yeah. Throw it down. I was ready to get loose. They, they, yeah. they, they, you they were feel them. That, you buddy. feel them when they were handed over to us. They're like, Yeah. <laughs> that was a, I don't know if I should let him go that far with that one. Yeah. You can feel they were trying to hold the rain. They had the governor on us, dude. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> the governor. Yeah, yeah, we were definitely on the two-step. Holy shit! Did we get know. behind the trash truck for Stop real? It. You're kidding, right? Does he have to do every piece of trash on this road? Uh, if so, man, he's just missed a lot already. Maybe just the ones right there. They do trash this way. So, so what is the first so what's the sequence and everything? I'm gonna text it to you so you've got it. That'd be perfect. So what I do is um, Doug explained to me yep. and makes perfect sense. In the high-end cars, they started noticing the head gaskets blowing at the top. So they reworked out the way they talk the heads. So basically they feel these two bolts, they're so much stronger than the one bolt that's there, mm -hmm. that it pulls the head down. If you were to concentrate on that lower side, mm -hmm. it pulls the head down in, into the copper more than the top can. Okay. So his view was to torque the top 50 foot pounds or 60 foot pounds, mm -hmm. torque the bottom so the head's flat. Yep. Then go to your next two steps all the way up to, I'm going to look at my notes, I think it's 220 or 240 on the top row. So the top is clamped. And do you just boom, 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 boom? boom. boom. Okay. And then do your two steps on those, which are, I think they're 150, I'll, I'll have a look. Yeah, that's fine. But I'll okay. fix it to you so you've got it on okay. your WhatsApp. So we're just making sure they're all down. I haven't done the, the lower row yet. Back here, day two, finishing this thing up. Mm -hmm. Frank started without us. He did. He didn't get it running. <laughs> so we uh, we left yesterday, and when we left yesterday, they did not have uh, the heads weren't done. Uh, the head guy was still surfacing. So, so what did you want me to put this to? Sixty also. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The first step is just to flatten the cylinder the head down, make sure it's home. Call it. Uh, it doesn't matter. Here. Well, so it uh, Pretty sure I didn't leave it in the cylinder. Yeah, that'd be cool. You want to send me this? It's very common. This doesn't have near as many bolts as the small block. No. It's got 19. Oh, it does. Oh, the small block does. Small block. Yeah. Man, what was that, like 250, 260? No, the next one, yes. Man. That's why I've got a long torque wrench. Yeah. I've got one just like this one, yeah, don't yeah. I? Yeah. I gotta have it. It's like a 30 inch something. That's only 160? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. He likes to show his guns. I'm gonna have to okay. rent him a man for that next I know, set. I know. Okay. 
And then the bottom row is 150. God dang. Put you a nice little happy tree right here. That's right. Oh, yes. Yeah. Do you know they're making a movie about Bob Ross? Really? Yeah. Who's playing what the main this? character? What is this one right here? Who's what? That one's kind of weird, huh? It's shorter. Oh, oh cause that's the, that's the one that's closest to the, uh, the rocker when you adjust it. So there'll be a nut that's being machined as well. Oh. oh I didn't even notice well, that whenever I pulled it off. Get one on the side. Yeah, that I was gonna say all of these right here. Oh, I could see. Oh wow, I'd I have guessed that, that somebody just rounded it off. That's, that's exactly what I thought. <laughs> one on each side, and you'll know because there's a rocker, and without trimming that bolt down, yeah. you can't adjust the rocker. Huh. Or you can't adjust the lash. I like this, man. Detroit Diesel. Remember that. Screen I'm gonna have to get some of this. I just bought it from, from Kerry. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. It's just, just a, uh, you can go online and probably buy it. Wow, I mean, no, I'm, no, I've no, already no. got a list of stuff since we tore this thing down of stuff that I gotta get from Kerry. So, if I go online and buy it, you know what's gonna happen? It's gonna be made in China and it won't work. Yeah, good. exactly. And, they will, gonna, and they'll be able to tell. They'll be able oh, to tell. Oh, they need gasket or something? Yep. yep. You don't use that shit off Amazon, huh? That's what they'll say. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, oh, sorry. I think we're good, man. What do you mean, sorry? Where are you going? No, where are you going? Where are you going? No, you aren't interrupting nothing. You're a big part of this. Uh, we're going to crank it. Do you want to prime it for oil? We did. We, like we primed it. Uh, we need to prime the fuel and we should be good. You want me to let it down a little more? No, I'm good. Sure? Yep. I mean, not that you couldn't get in there. Yeah. It's not as high when it's on the project. Moment of truth. It's good, man. I, I ain't even sweating it. Except all those rod bolts that I... Nothing? No, no starter. These have got to be in part. Oh, the, 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 the relay out. It's right there. Oh, yeah. It's weird, huh? Now watch, it's going to just start turning uh -huh. over. <laughs> Are we good? Do we got a starter? Hang on, no, 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 not okay. What was that? That, well, it, it, I reckon. Um, <laughs> okay, I thought you had heard that before. I had. And then you went, now we're good to go. <laughs> it's almost like, it's almost like we, it it, okay, it's seated in, yeah. every, and the fuel's there, it's ready to go. And push the piston down, you know. Yeah, 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 no, we're good, we're good. I reckon it's just getting the airlocks out of the fuel system. Yep. We're good to go now. That starter's still iffy.
That's it. Good to go. With a fresh bullet. That's right. That's right. So loud. Yeah, they're they're pretty loud. Yeah. Worth it though. Yeah. <sighs> I think that's it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Take it and Be let, her, it let her rip. And... Let her rip. Sounds just like it did. Yeah. Yep. Except new. Got that pop. Except new. Yeah. <laughs> and you can do it with 30 runs on it. Man, these things sound good. They sound cool. Like the way that they crackle and pop. Yep. And Sounds like a real race car. Yeah. Well, <laughs> this is a race car engine. Guess what? What's that? Just told me to go sit by the pool and have a drink. Yeah, it is. Well, so, we appreciate everything you've done here for us. No, that probably so, like this would have sucked doing it at the track. I mean, obviously we're gonna have to do it, but for the first time, it was way nicer taking our time, yep. not rushing, and not to mention having a machine shop here with the old dude going back there and you know going through the heads, checking everything out, yeah. making sure everything is good. Because of course, next time we freshen this up, the heads will get all new. Yes. New springs, it new sounds valves. Sounds expensive. It does. New everything. Yep. So. Oh. So we're good for you know what fifty more runs? Yeah, <laughs> at least. I mean everything 30, looked everything looked good at, at thirty six. That means we can try fifty next time, right? Oof. I mean that's the way Doug we talked about uh, with the small block. Yep. Like we did what twenty nineteen the first one or yep. something like that. Let and him look then at we it. Let him look at it, and he was like, "Yep, keep going." Then Runner we did thirty six or thirty eight. Yep. And everything looked good, and he said, "Man, go to 50. So that was all on the one set of rods. That was on one set of rods, and uh, no, no, no. We they got a new set 19. of rods they every time. Yeah, they got a new set of rods. And then we did the thirty-six or thirty-eight. They got a new set of rods, and then he said, "Okay, go to go to fifty. Cool. You know, we did what forty-eight. Yes. And uh, it was time for a lot of stuff after forty-eight. Well, the the pistons end up having seventy-two runs on them, and yes. they were. Yeah, but we ended up putting Smashed. sleeves in it. And yes. Doug was like, man, it looks amazing. We ended up putting sleeves Sleeves, in thing, crank, pistons, crank, rods. Crank, yeah, everything. but when you're when you're at that level and you how much boost did you have in it? 80. That? All 80. Of it. You know what I mean? So like <laughs> He goes, <man>. oh. <laughs> 80. That must have sounded pissed off when you were letting go. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. We just couldn't uh, really control the power like what we wanted to. You know, like uh, we talk about it a lot and uh, on the surface that we have the best chance of putting power down to pick up et is right here it ain't out there no. i mean we had you know? 60 plus pounds in it at two seconds we but had, we needed it by one you know what yeah, I mean? had, yeah that one we second that you were missing 70, out on 74 yeah. 75 in it by two and a half seconds yeah. you know but we're, we're missing the 60 foot you know i mean the fast we we, we could 60 foot 980 990 but at all them no preps, it was one flat at every track we went to. It didn't matter if it was a good track or, or shit. Yeah. You know, we could one flat. And then the mile an hour and the back split wasn't enough to make up what these cars will 60 foot. No. You know what I mean? You got some cars out there like Ryan or even Jim Howe Jim Howe. going 930s to the 60 foot. How are you gonna, how are you gonna handle that? You're no. not with a turbo car. You know, well, you've like, got, you don't have that pressure coming out of the zoomies. That's right. To that's help that's another thing. That, that is another thing. You that's, know, like, that's, that's huge. You know, have you ever put the car on the four corner scale? I, I, I'd like, like to. I've heard about it. I've heard you about know, it. And we yeah. always talked, you know, because I was the, man, that's bullshit. Turbo cars have got to be making something at 18 pounds and, of boost. And they do. At, what, what were we leaving at with the, with the 16, car? 16, 17, the 18. 17 pounds of boost and 5,000 RPM. Those bullhorns had to have been doing something, and they clearly were. Whenever we found out that the car wouldn't go straight, mm -hmm. so we we had a, oh we forgot that bullhorn. We forgot the bullhorn. We forgot one bullhorn at home one time, <laughs> and we went testing with Petty. Oh, it was a fucking it was, mess. It was brutal, that was man. a bad but, day. <laughs> but anyways, I decided to make a pass anyways. Well, the car went hard right, and we were like, "What the hell?" Car never goes right. Car never goes right. It, if it goes, it goes somewhere. It goes left. Well, come to find out, it was it was getting pressure from one side. It was picking the car up from the one side, and it was making it actually it was yeah. it was making it go right. And so then we talked to Petty, and Petty goes, "Oh, well, yeah, of course that's what it is, you know." And so we talked to RK. RK whipped us up one right then. We were two hours, two hours away, we were two hours away from RK, and he said, "Head this way." I 
kind of remember what those things look like and I'll get it really close. You know, hey, that motherfucker made one right then and there. Phantom hauled ass there, picked it up, uh, and brung it back, and we ended up, uh, you know, having to cut and weld. Put a little and, extension and on it. Put a little it. extension on it, and then the car went straight as fuck. Well, and so, then so tragedy it, struck. Then I hit the wall. <laughs> it was the only time I've ever hit the wall. But, you know, we, uh, we blew an oil line, and it got oil everywhere, and it's the only time I've ever touched the wall. But we went through the finish line at a, at a 90 flat at a 198. Mm -hmm. Wow. At 198. And as soon as I went through the finish line, the car turned sideways, and I was like, fuck me. It's Which, inevitable. We're all going to end up having to experience something, you know. Yeah. But... Unfortunately, unfortunately, you know. it's part of anyway, when you make it. We didn't passes. mean to talk about me being a crash. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, we meant uh, the the bullhorn obviously shot, yeah. does not do what the zoomies do, yeah. but it does. Something. Well, you can watch this. You can look at the shock dad on the starting line when he gets on the brake. It starts compressing that rear shock. That's right. Yeah. If you know when it's loose, anyways. Yeah. It's pretty wild. Yeah, obviously, it, it's just way easier to handle all of this combo on the streets and on the terrible surfaces. Yep. You know, so. Even with the small tire, it's, it's uh, yeah. you know, it helps. So, and that's why we'll be swapping the other combo. <laughs> to something with zoomies. That's right.